So, Mr. Egelen, thank you for accepting this interview on the, on the occasion of the Forum Espace Humanitaire in Annecy. Um, this interview will be conducted by uh, Antonio Donini, who is visiting fellow at Feinstein International Center at the Tuft University, and research associate at the Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies in Geneva. Mm -hmm. And myself, um, I'm uh, one of the administrators of this uh, rather recent uh, journal, uh, Humanitarian Alternatives. And we are very pleased to have this opportunity to ask you a few questions in your happy to be here particular role in humanitarian action. Uh, and we're particularly happy because of your long association with humanitarian issues. And um, maybe you can also, in some of these questions, look back a bit and perhaps look forward as well. So th the first question is about humanitarian space and. Uh, starting from the fact that this space is uh, largely defined by the politics that shape crisis settings. And while uh, humanitarians have some agency in organizing and shaping the response, it is a broader political context that restricts or facilitates life-saving humanitarian action. So do you see a qualitative change in recent years? Uh, Peter Mora referred to pre-Solferino armed conflict situations, and others have talked of IHL-free zones. And so what are your views? Is this uh, too negative a, uh, a perspective? And what are the main um, qualitative changes for you? Well, uh, indeed, I've been in humanitarian work since I was 19, uh, 40 one years ago, when I left uh, Norway to go to Colombia, which was already that time in a cruel civil war. And in these 40 years, I have uh, been uh, responsible for saying too many times, it has never been worse. I, th I think we are each uh, generation, and there have been many now, uh, of humanitarians feeling overwhelmed, feeling outrage with uh, meeting these uh, men with guns and power doing whatever they please it seems with total impunity we feel powerless and we we want to cry out to the world it's never been worse i would however agree that we've seen regression especially since 2012 and we can see that very clearly also on the displacement figures. I work as in the Norwegian Refugee Council. Uh, we have an internal displacement monitoring center and together with the UNHCR, we're the ones who give the world the, the global uh, displacement figure. And something happened around 2012, it went through the roof. Uh, from uh, an enormous increase from this level of between 40 and 50 million displacement uh, person displaced by conflict and violence to now more than 65 million. And that's the highest number we have registered since the 1940s. Um, so there's been a re regression and Syria war uh, you, uh, connected with the Iraq uh, war, uh, it's, it's been Yemen, it's been South Sudan, it, and it's been Somalia, it's been one thing on top of the other. However, in the 1990s, I was the Deputy Foreign Minister of Norway, responsible for humanitarian relief. And I would s firmly say, 1990s were much worse in terms of killings, uh, violence, it was the age of the genocides. We haven't seen that kind of genocides now for a generation. The ones we had in Rwanda, in Bosnia, uh, in the Balkans uh, at, at large. So uh, uh, it, it's, it's not, it's, it's bad, 
but there have been many periods that has been equally bad for civilians over, or, or, uh, over these last uh, 150 years since the Battle of Solferino. Uh, I see a point that there is probably uh, a shift. Um, what we witness nowadays are uh, total war uh, approach to conflicts. Um, and uh, of course you know David Miliband, director of IOC, mm -hmm. when he, he has recently stated that we are not confronted to a multiplication of humanitarian crisis per se, but to a crisis of diplomacy and the plague of impunity. Would you agree with that bold statement? I do agree with David Miliband that uh, we have a deep crisis of, uh, of, of uh, diplomacy, uh, conflict prevention, conflict resolution, uh, as well as generalized impunity in too many conflicts. But again, I, I would say uh, 1990s was worse in terms of averting, I mean, there were a hundred uh, warnings that Rwanda would happen. And, and the world collectively uh, left uh, Rwanda tail between our legs, basically. The UN was there, we left. Uh, Bill Clinton has said, has admitted it was his biggest failure. Kofi Annan ag agreed the UN failed and so on. Uh, I was in, in Bosnia-Herzegovina. UN was at its most impotent and we, the humanitarians, were really uh, feeding Srebrenica. My organization was among those feeding the people of Srebrenica until they were collectively massacred. It, 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 it's, it's dangerous to say that it, it, the, the, this is more an age of impunity than before. Uh, when did Congo have, uh, have uh, uh, rule of law? Uh, with the International Criminal Court, we've actually seen an age of a few warlords being, uh, meeting uh, justice. Uh, but I completely agree that this is the age of us having enormous progress in assistance and not commensurate uh, progress in protection. We are giving blankets to uh, a, a, a woman being uh, gang raped by militias and then she's gang raped again and we ask her, would you like another blanket? I mean, she doesn't need an, another blanket. She needs these rapists to be put to jail, the commanding generals to be put uh, to jail, there to be prevention of future violence. Uh, now, today, we, I see in my work in the UN in trying to uh, get assistance to the besieged areas of Syria and to the, uh, to the conflict zones where there are civilians in Syria. We're failing uh, in Eastern Ghouta, we're failing in Idlib, even though we have all of the concerned nations around the table, from Russia to the United States and from Iran to Saudi uh, uh, Arabia. Yes, it's a, it's a total failure of international diplomacy and we shouldn't have that in 2018. We should be as ambitious in protection as we have become in assistance. It's interesting because the next question I was about to ask you is that it was you know, starting from the fact that we are better at uh, feeding people, at providing non-food items, uh, but it still seems that uh, protection is always the bridesmaid and never the bride. And there are obvious external reasons for this, but how about the internal reasons inside the system? And are we doing enough? For example, looking back at the final phases of the war in Sri Lanka, where it was not just the international community that was uninterested in dealing with protection, it was also the UN agencies, it was also you know, the, the leaders of the UN in the country. Hmm. Uh, and since then, we've had the lofty statements on the centrality of protection. You know, is this changing the workings? Uh, is it, what else could we do? What else should be done? No, I would give you 100% right in uh, the centrality of protection 
which is the declaration from the United Nations and from the, the collective humanitarians, not happening. It's not a central thing. The central thing is assisting people. You know, the, another blanket to the to 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 the family who are just driven out of their of of their home. Why? Well, number one, it is more difficult, basically. Um, uh, w w what we as unarmed humanitarians are good at is be the logistics now of, 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 of relief work. It's amazing what the World Food Programme can do in, in bringing enormous quantities of food cheaply and effectively to places where we would have given up before. We, we let people starve to death in the 1980s, big time. Uh, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, four famines were predicted for last year. None of them happened. Uh, it's more difficult to, to, to tell, uh, you know, a hundred uh, youngsters with Kalashnikov, uh, stop this, uh, than to, to come with the, 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 the village that, where they are with, with, uh, with uh, assistance. Uh, so number one, is, it's, it's more difficult. The other one is where not having commensurate investment in trying to have all of us monitor, witness, uh, uh, do advocacy on, on this, uh, look at how new technology could help us to, to, to make people ac accountable. Uh, I am critical of what our, our field is doing in protection. I feel that some of the protection-based agencies could do more to seek partnerships, to ask for uh, um, help, uh, to invite more partnership and also think uh, too many humanitarians are too scared of offending whoever is in charge because they say we will not risk our access, we need our, our, our presence there. Well, no, no. I mean if we're, if we're witnessing uh, people being massacred, uh, no, we shouldn't stay there. That's the whole lesson of Sri Lanka, of course. And the UN said we should have spoken out, even though there was a risk of being thrown out, because we ended up as passive witnesses to people being, um, being, being massacred. This is the biggest challenge we have ahead. This is where we need to sit down and talk to change uh, our behavior, in my view, in, on the protection side. From a different angle, um, one of the depressing realities of our time is the, uh, the difficulty of engaging citizens on slaughter and survival issues. Uh, it's getting every, every, every time more difficult. Whether it is starve or surrender uh, in Syria or the droning in the, in the mind uh, of people seeking refuge, um, well, these situations are outrageous and most of us just sit and wring our hands. So why is there no indignation anymore? Mm. What can be done to inform and mobilize citizens and civil society on these problems? Well, um, there need to be more outrage and we need to mobilize more. I agree on that. That's part of our, our failure. I, I would, however, um, uh, warn us three uh, men uh, about 60 that I think part of the, uh, the, the protest is different today. I mean, it's happening in social media, it's happening uh, on the internet, it's happening uh, in other ways. I, I think most of us would, would have protested a lot in front of embassies in our youth. Mm -hmm. That's not how they do it uh, in, in, in uh, the, the, the youngsters in, in, in our time. Um, I, I find, uh, I mean, in the humanitarian world, there were a hundred organizations that could go anywhere in the world to do humanitarian relief in conflicts uh, when I was uh, young. Now they are, we must be eight, nine hundred, perhaps a thousand organizations. We have, my group NRC has uh, more than 13,000 
field workers. Um, we have a, 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 a huge program. Uh, it is uh, 10 times uh, bigger than it was uh, only, only 20 years ago. So it's different now. Um, is, it, is it worse, the engagement? I don't know. It's different. Uh, we know that you're not representing the government of Norway, but uh, we have a question about uh, European responsibilities on what's happening in the world. Norway is not part of the EU, but it seems to go along with the general lack of Absolutely. political will in Europe on addressing the so-called migration crisis. Meanwhile, Lebanon, uh, Turkey, uh, uh, Jordan, have provided shelter to millions who have fled uh, Syria and, and uh, more generally 85% of all refugees are uh, not in our countries, they're in their countries. Yeah. So, you know, outrage and, uh, you know, are we doing enough? You know, what, what, on this no. issue of... Uh, the responsibility that Europe has and the, the lofty um, humanitarian consensus and other statements it's uh, signed up to. Um, what, what, are there any pressure points that might make things change? Yeah, well, uh, uh, number one, I can agree with you. I mean, Norway and Switzerland is, is part of this. It's not, it's not Brussels, it's, it's Europe as such. Uh, I, I would, however, say it's not it's not uniform in, in our continent. I would say that Sweden and Germany are heroic compared to everybody else. And I would say on the bottom of the pit, the race to the bottom, are many of the Central and Eastern European countries. Uh, uh, I mean, Slovakia, Czechia, uh, Poland, uh, Hungary who were very uh, good in asking for asylum during uh, communist time in places like Scandinavia, and now very good in saying we have no responsibility to, to, to uh, uh, receive anyone today. They talk about their Christian heritage, but actually if Jesus Christ, uh, Joseph and Mary would ask for asylum as they did in Egypt at the time, in any of these Christian Central or Eastern European, they would have been rejected today. Sweden and Germany took more than the other 35 nations combined. Uh, what, we, what is happening now is that we are, all of us, as nations, including my own country, willing to pay money for poor countries to, to take all of the refugee uh, responsibility upon themselves. We, we sort of we pay Lebanon for taking more Syrians than all of Europe. I think that's unfair, really. Uh, and the responsibility sharing that came in the summit of, of Obama and company in, uh, in New York uh, has not happened. I would also, uh, however, say that we as humanitarians need to agree that the main durable solution is return. I, I, f I often find that we are, as humanitarian, very, um, we're very conservative. Let us really perfect this refugee camp, because there will n it will never be, uh, you know, Switzerland to return to. So, so let's let's ha have the camp better. Uh, so, so Syrians, the best thing for most of the Syrians is to return to Syria at some point, and we need to help facilitate that happen. Uh, it, it's, it's not going to be uh, Lebanon and it's, it, the, uh, I, I am not going to be able, I think, to, in my time to get the Europeans to do the right thing, which is to take quite a few to them. Or to get the uh, Ar oil-rich uh, Arab countries to receive their fair share or the Asian countries, or, 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 or even now the North Americans. Or Russia. Or Russia or China, you know. Uh, they, they, the P5, the P5, none of the P5 is even close to do what Sweden is doing, our neighboring country. Now, so, um, 
this is going to be uh, the challenge really to have a working responsibility sharing and real work to have durable solutions for these people return local integration and relocation to third places and real 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 responsibility sharing there i, I i'm looking forward to you european and other leaders to say can we now be as active in saving millions of, of human lives as we were in saving the banks a, a few year, years back where we had you know summit meetings every other day i'm looking forward to that well we just just can hope that they will hear you uh, i believe that time's up yeah, thank you for having me you are expected uh, to the next session of the forum espace humanitaire which was the main reason of your presence here yeah Happy to be here with my French uh, colleagues. Okay, thanks a lot for accepting this interview. My pleasure.